it's titled uh, birth order, but it's actually, well, just about everything. Meaning some way or another, what you're about to enter into is an understanding that how nature works, how genetics works and how it's reflected in the family tree is actually reflected in everything else as well. So we will come through this and we'll start with some basic explanation and gradually increase your ability to use or comprehend what this is really about. Now, if you see this um, graphic, I'll turn you that direction just to be sure that you can see it. Hang on, I wanna make sure that I'm also recording, but I don't know how to get there. There we go. Okay. Will these straight one then? Mm -hmm. Can everyone see the uh, screen well enough? I'll just assume that that's a yes. And now, if you want to, you can chime in, ask a question, clarify something you might want to. This, as you can tell, is somewhat of a graphic of the family tree. The um, triangles are masculine. So this triangle is father. This is father's father. This is the great grandfather. And we give them characteristic numbers. The uh, circle is mother. Mother's mother is number two and so on, number four. And so the circles are feminine, the triangles are masculine. And then this is your great grandparents, your grandparents and your parents. These are obviously the most directly significant people involved in your genetics, your pattern of personality, your body type, your underlying thinking, many of the personal issues that you might have in your body and or your feelings, they are composited by this group of ancestors. How does this relate to birth order? Well, in our birth order function, we say that there are six different types of boys. And we can come in and describe the difference between number one, number two, three, four, and five, six, and we have lots of information that you can have. The, the birth order book is, is available online for you to be able to have the description of the personality types. This is mostly um, the mechanical understanding about how it fits together. Because there's a lot of benefit to understanding that there are six different sisters, six different brothers, and you'll see a, a unique component of red and blue all the way down Sometimes I used to call this like shoelaces. And this is an alternating pattern where number one son, he's blue from mother's family and he's related to where the number one is. We call this mother's father. What does that mean? That means that the likely what's called methylation line or epigenetic line is number one son has a tendency to get his most personality driven attributes from his mother's side of the family. Number one girl, father's side, number one, father's mother, same for her. So father's mother is very influential over what number one girl is or has in her personality or her health. So by being able to go down through this line, we see that number two son is from father's father, number Three son is from mother's mother's father all the way up here. And all the way down the line, you can do that with the girls and the boys. Now, you may say, well, I have no children or, or I only have two, or why should I look at six girls or six boys? Well, what I would say is this is the operator's manual of your spaceship or the operator's manual for your own being, soul, mind, body. This is the, the infrastructure for how you learn to know more about yourself, how yourself is related to body types, personality, and so on. And each one of these is also related to a gland, an organ, 
a body system, a meridian, and yes, a time of the day, a season of the year. This is a composite of all the influences that are affecting you. Now, what I found is that even by just acknowledging the possibility that they exist, you're already doing something. You're changing your relationship to it. So for example, if I say father's mother's father, what we define as number six boy, the very last one down here, if we say that, if we, we take your attention there, this automatically begins to um, stimulate or open up any unresolved feelings that this great grandfather may be currently transmitting into your well being or your feelings or your thinking or your symptoms. So if we say father's mother's father, number six boy, it's going to do what I call begin to ring bells. It starts to help you begin to recognize. Even though you didn't meet your father's mother's parents, <clears throat> these parents are quite influential in your overall well being or happiness. <clears throat> so, for myself, I only really met two of my grandparents in my lifetime. You know, I didn't really know the other ones, but it took me a long time to realize that all of these great grandparents, they have a direct influence on how I function or feel. So, if I say to you, uh, father's father's father, I'm describing a specific sequence that we get to is called number four boy. Later on, you'll find that these numbers also correspond to body positions. So if I say four, that's in the chest area. If I say three, it's in the solar plexus. If I say five, it's in the throat. If I say six, it's in the head. So this is a body orientation to what part of the body might be affected by this particular grandparent? Boy, that's a lot to consider, but there's a lot more to it. There's a lot of reasons why this is really important to be able to facilitate your own growth. For example, this, this group of grandfathers, they correspond to what's called all of the ascending forces running up the front of the body. And these grandmothers, all six of them, they correspond to the energy running down the back of the body. So you have ascending and descending forces in the body. And this is why this is so useful for you to at least even begin to hypothesize about its very existence. And then ask yourself, is there some way I can um, theorize about this? Is it logical? Is it practical? Is it useful in some way? How might I experiment with these? So this is what it's about, and I'll move you forward on one, and I'll show you some other possibilities. I'm going to take you through just a couple of slides. I like to also incorporate the, the colors involved with them. So later on, we'll show these colors. When we talk about a number three boy position, there will be a color, one color of green. If we talk about a three girl, there'll be another color of green. And yes, these are also corresponding to parts of the family tree. And later on, these colors become useful. There's some therapeutic functions. There's some vibrational capacities. There are all kinds of possible meditations or psychological benefits. We're talking about a lot of information. Danny, can I ask a quick question? Hi, it's Christina Wafsi here. Um, so when you speak about the number one boy, girl, you know, however you, you count them, do you take into account any miscarriages in between prior to birth? How does this play in? Um, I've long and hard looked at this issue and it seems pretty um, consistent that miscarriages under the uh, 12th week don't seem to have an impact on the overall birth order number. If I could just go back on one. Um, if you have a number one son and then you have a miscarriage after the first son, um, it depends really on the, the time of the, the conception gestation cycle or when that was. 
anything definitely past 16 weeks, anything after four months of gestation, yes, it has an influence. Definitely any stillborn, yes. And under 12 weeks, I've not been able to find it. Now, just let me clarify one thing. When I'm talking about the birth order number or the genetic number, I'm really talking about the father's biological children. It's well known that it's the father that determines, I don't always agree with this, but it's the father that determines the gender sequence. So if the father has a son somewhere else, known or unknown to him, then he has another son, it's a number two son, and that has all kinds of permutations or effects. Later on, I'll describe all the exceptions for you. And so for now, just uh, my suggestion is just learn the empirical system by itself. What does it mean <clears throat> to you to feel your own number one son? What does that mean to you when your own biological number one son is related to your father if you're a woman? And then the relationship between you and your father has a specific influence. Later on, we will give you a map of each one of these positions and how it affects the body. This position affects the respiratory line and a later on the line of uh, asthmatic functions or anxiety. So all of these different positions have different symptoms. So to start with, just stay with the understanding of this is the first child of the father, and then we'll go through the sequence. Is that helpful? Later on. Sure. Can... Um, I, I was... sure, sure, sure. Thank you. For now, we can do that. And later on, I'll, I'll, yeah. I will be glad to put your own kids uh, for everyone here on, on the wall, either this time or next time. We're probably going to do at least two classes on birth order, possibly three, because it's such an important subject to be able to understand self, your parents, your kids, how to relate, physical symptoms, emotional symptoms. So it's a really useful subject, but it really helps if you start out by appreciating the uh, pristine reality of what it is in its ideal form. Now, one of the reasons for it, this is obviously, for those who know it, this has something to do with their chakra system. This is the energetic flow of life force in the body. There is an ascending force and there is a descending force. And it's related to the pelvic cavity, the, the belly function, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the head. And this is why it's useful is the occupying of the sensitivity of these movements inside you increases your capacity for mobilizing your own experience of feeling or the future experience of health. So this is what generates health. This is also what delivers disease and suffering and pain is the same systems are circulating with pain and suffering, or they're going to circulate with a higher function of well-being and understanding. So just merely by going through them, just like this, you're already gaining benefit because you're, you're acknowledging the likely existence of something that you will later on experience as emotionally or physically present inside of you. So just by having the tendency to move through this you're already gaining the benefits of this form of study. Now, you'll find later on that they come in sets of threes. So this is called number one son. Let's just leave it because it's going to mess up the next one. Number one son. I'll wait a second. Number one son is connected in another way we'll describe and number three son and number five son. And you find that all of these girls, boys, are connected in sets of three. If you eventually 
begin to recognize that and utilize that, then you'll find that there is a distinct connection between one and three. Now, the interesting parts about this part of the development is that um, I'm capable of being able to affect or change the energy between one and three. I'm also capable of changing the energy between one, three, and five. Now, I didn't know this many years ago, that it is useful to be able to actually want to feel what it's like to be a number one girl. I'm a man, but I need to learn how to do all of them. Thanks. If I learn how to do number one girl, you find out that number one girl is connected to three girl. Three girls connected to five girl. And later on, I mean, that becomes critically important in your own progressive unfoldment. I mean, it sounds like science fiction in the moment. How does understanding what it's like to be a number one girl because she has a particular vast temperament and personality and a body type, and she has a progression in her life. She seldom actually sees it that way, but she will experience it that way. Her life takes on what I call a diameter number one, which is usually family or self, diameter number three, which is she's gonna do that into the community, diameter number five, the larger one is that she's gonna to wanna to do that in the world, and if she knows this exists, she's much more likely to have a fluid experience of this. Now, later on, how do we guide a number one son to learn something? How do we guide a number two daughter to learn what she needs to learn? There is a, a whole educational platform inside of this, but all of these have to do with body systems. One system is about digestion. Another system is about assimilation. Another one is about elimination. This is basically the whole metabolic energy function of the physical body, and they're all connected together in these threes. Um, this is an introduction. I'm not trying to explain it. This is a lots and lots of information, but it starts out with just learn the simple basics. Then we also will lead it back to the sectors of the iris will be these same numbers. We'll have areas of the iris that show what you got from this grandparent. <clears throat> the, the grandparent of these areas also corresponds to the birth order position. Wow, what does that mean? That the area in the top of the iris will correspond to a grandmother number six, and the other area on the other side, grandmother number five, and all of the parts of the iris will correspond to all the parts of the body. So later on, we compare your iris with your birth order, and it gives us two layers of data. You combine that with body symptoms and other things, and the amount of information that's available is just utterly overwhelming. Next. Now, down to the practical sense of the basics here for a moment. If you could just adjust that left to right. Yeah. We're gonna start with number one girl. What that means is if the first child conceived by the father is a girl, she's called number one girl. I'm not gonna go into a lot of the attributes about her, just to say that number one girls are usually very solid, oftentimes very mental, and in some ways quite controlling. That's number one girl. Yes, there's lots of beautiful things about her, and we desperately need to have them in the world because she has the ability to sustain and protect life. Very cool. Now I'm gonna show you the difference if a number one girl comes behind a boy. A number one girl comes behind two boys or a number one girl comes behind three boys and so on. I'd like you to see the differences. And the first thing we do is 
what is the genetic number? Well, we call that, in this case, if a boy comes first, we call everything else behind a boy. So she is two behind a boy first, three behind a boy, four behind a boy, five behind a boy. So what does that mean? That means she's a number one girl, but she's going to have attributes by what we call a two boy position. Two boy has a quality to it that's like fire, action, mobility. So she's going to be a, a two boy, but she's going to do it like a number one girls. So what's a number one girl? Mental, strong. What's a two boy? Emotionally driven. So she's a two behind a boy, fire, with an ability for mind. So this is what we call a double yang or two influences from the father's family because you'll find that the number one girl connected to father's mother the number two behind a boy is connected to father's father so she has two influences coming from father's side of the family so it modifies how her one girl is displayed so for your just for the recognizing the numbers this is two behind a boy one girl Genetic number, two behind a boy. Gender number, one girl. That'll make a lot of difference later. In this case, it's three behind a boy, which takes her into a position that's a three. Then she's also a number one girl. So what is three behind a boy? Well, three behind a boy is what we call mind or clever or fox, but three behind a boy comes from mother's side of the family. Number one girl comes from father's side of the family. In this position, she's combining two lines from two different parts of the family tree inside of her. Number three position is also a mental position. If she's number one girl, it's a mental position. So this is a double mental position. And it has a very different personality than this one who was just two behind the boy. This is a three behind a boy, one girl situation. Three behind a boy, mental. How does she do it? Like a number one girl. Next, this is four behind a boy, one girl. These are all number one girls and later on we'll combine them. So you can see the variability of how this works. This is four behind a boy, so this is a four boy position, which is oftentimes a socially dynamic position, a playful outward bound kind of person. But this is, how is it gonna do it? As a number one girl. So this is sometimes the four boy position is called uh, the prince or the king. So if you get a number one girl in this position, she's the queen. And she's mothering, so she's going to be the queen mother. Um, good luck with that, because that gives her two different forms of strength from her father's family, gives her social control of the home, because she's a one girl, but social control of large groups, because she's four. And then you now have the, the next one, which is five behind a boy, still gender number, number one girl. This is a five boy position, and you find out that the five boy position is a isolated Michelangelo, brilliant artist, genius type who just likes working alone and wants to be artistic. How will she do it? Like a number one girl. Wow, so that's going to be somewhat of a contradiction in a way because five boy position is going to be an isolated focus, whereas a one girl has a tendency to want to go out. So what kind of art is she going to do? Well, possibly something with hands or food or situations with people. So it helps to define the differences. These are very different children. If you have one girl who's four behind a boy, very, very socially gregarious and outgoing and driven, but if you just add one more pattern and she's five behind a boy, she's completely different. She's inward, artistic, may want to just invent something by herself, not as driven to go outward, a completely different type of personality. Then you have another pattern, which is six 
behind a boy, one girl. You find that the six boy is a very dynamic position. How is she gonna do it like a one girl? Now, if you can see the difference is six behind a boy likes to influence the largest number, the most driven to be in government and or authority or lead armies or have a mission. Six behind a boy, how's she going to do it? Like a one girl. That's two very powerful forces of achievement or action or the doing of something. That's very outward bound, very directed, very different than five behind a boy, one girl, very different than four behind a boy, three behind a boy, two behind a boy. This is all the varieties of number one girl going down to number six. And yes, number seven takes it back to number one girl again. So we'll discuss that. This is just learning the mechanics about how these pieces fit together. Now we're gonna accelerate it. We're gonna take the situation where you have boy first, later on we'll do the girls first as well, but this is boy first. So this is still two behind a boy, one girl. Now this one down here is three behind a boy, two girl. Why is it two girl? Well, it is two girls. So we have a genetic number. It's three behind a boy first. Gender number, count the number of girls, two. Three behind a boy, two girls. So this has a specific quality that's like a three boy, but she will do it like a two girl. Very different than if it was this situation here. If you talked about how do you do a three behind a boy as a two girl? You find out that two girl is very soft and sometimes watery or uh, elusive. So this, this three boy position done like a two girl is a mobilizing, well, I used to call it water snake because it's elusive, but it has its own form of danger. But if you're a three behind a boy, one girl, it's a completely different personality because even though it's a mental position, she's also mental. There's no water in this one. So she, even though they're in the three boy position, they're completely opposite in their behavior. It helps to be able to see that difference. In this situation, for example, remember you have this position's called four behind a boy. Gender number, two girl. So this is the position, if you will, we'll just call it the queen. If you have a girl in that position here, four behind a boy, one girl, she's the queen mother. She's the queen of the group or the queen of the house or the queen of taking control. She wants people to know that she's in charge. Now, if she's a four behind a boy, two girl, how does she do four boy? like a two girl. So this one is water. So I call her queen of the water or queen of the mist or the queen of elusiveness because she's elusive. How does she do for boy? She does it like a two girl. Now you can do any number of gender combinations and I'll, I'll show you how they work. If we come on down, this is still five behind a boy, Michelangelo position. How will she do it? Gender number, two girl. She'd be Michelangelo of small things or water or mist or magical things. This is five behind a boy, gender number, two girl. I know that's a lot. If you learn the intrinsic mechanics after a while, it's just, well, second natured. So this is a six behind a boy for her. Six behind a boy is power. How is she going to do it? Gender number two, water. What's she gonna do? Have, you know, water fights or wanna have a revolution of lemmings running into oceans? I, I, I don't know how to describe. How do you do a six boy, very yang, with a two girl water mystic nature? 
it takes a while to define what that might even look like. I, maybe she likes to have squirt gun fights. I, I, I don't know, something, but power. So that's an overview of how to begin the combination of constitutional types. I'm gonna just move to one more. Now we're gonna just take the same kind of pattern, but we're gonna put the girl across the top. Later on, we'll combine girl, boy, girl, boy. You can see how it works. So anything behind a girl first is be called behind a girl. So this is two behind a girl, one boy. This is two behind a girl. How is she doing it? Well, she's a two girl. And this is three behind a girl, one boy. This is obviously three girl. This is four behind a girl, one boy. This is five behind a girl, one boy. So I'll come back and describe how some of this works. So here you have, here you have a pattern of three behind a girl, gender number two. How does that matter? Because you'll find out that three behind a girl is from father's side of the family. You'll have the math. Second son, gender number, is also from the father's side of the family. What is the second son like? Fire. Three behind a girl has a desire to be in the community, to do public service. How will he do it? With fire two forms of yang or masculine from the father's family makes this one very physically driven, physically powerful. This is a, a very significant position for being able to get something done. Now in this position, it's called four behind a girl, gender number two. So what is four behind a girl? You'll discover later that four girl has a tendency to want to dissolve anything. That's an interesting thing to consider later, how you might want to learn the four behind a girl position because she helps you release, let go of, dissolve things physically or emotionally. How will this person do it like a two boy? Wow, so how do you have a four behind a girl just from mother's family, what I would call a yin side of the heart function, a dissolving function, but doing it like fire. Wow, what's gonna be a yin fire in the heart? Hmm. Somebody who wants to burn something down, change something, change the world or something, but using a degree of force or fire to achieve it. We could long discuss the implications of the difference between these two, and the only real difference is one more person ahead of them. Now, what's really amazing about that is that every one of these gender combinations ends up being a, a, a place inside of me, part of my energetic system, gland, organ, heart function, brain function. Um, I, I can't even begin to honestly acknowledge the actual degree to which a human being utilizes its available resources. I personally don't think it could be much more than 3% for the average person. I, I wouldn't even give myself 3% knowing the magnitude of knowledge that's available and the sensitivity that's available, each one of these positions is a, a beautiful being about something. So to be able to describe these mechanical positions, I, I hope this at least gets you started and then I'll give you practice. I'd like to offer the opportunity to do practice by putting some on the whiteboard and describing some of the things that you might utilize as you go through it. So I think we'll just um, pause here and ask you, do you have questions? And we have, have one question. from the audience. I have a question. 
So you talked about um, the birth positions, you know, and you're kind of describing some of them that are at the bottom, if you will. But um, is there a difference, say, if you're the second child, uh, if there is a third child or if there isn't a third child? Yes, subsequent siblings have an impact, but not in the way that you um, automatically express yourself. They're more of um, agents to help you resolve your reasons why you're alive. So younger siblings have a way of triggering your emotional phenomena. And you're actually doing more to program them than they are to program you. So older system, older uh, siblings, they have an influence to program their siblings, but they are triggered by their younger siblings, but not programmed by them. It's an interesting thing because the older ones are more um, hardened in their nature and the younger siblings come, they're influenced by the older sibling, but the older sibling is more like Teflon and doesn't really receive it, but's triggered by it. That's a whole nother philosophical discussion. I think that's the, the end of where we were. Yes. Oh, I just wanted to show this for John's benefit. I think John's listening today. Hi, John. Still one of my favorite pictures. This is a picture of John, a friend of mine, in the arms of his father. And wouldn't it be nice if we all had this type of ongoing relationship with our own father? And one of the advantages of birth order is to help to guide our children in ways that require some degree of wisdom in order to do so. So we're going to change the room around a bit. I'm going to turn the PowerPoint off for now. Unless there are other questions about the graphics we just had, I'll I have a Go question. Ahead. Go ahead. Hi, Denny. Um, I'm just trying to understand where I would fall because my birth order is different from the, um, the home that I grew up in with my mother. So I'm the first girl of four and I have three boys after me. And that's my mo from my mom. And that's the house I grew up in. But then my birth father who passed away when I was younger, um, I would be the fifth child of his out of six and i'm the fifth girl after a boy pause there for a moment okay and we'll just start this out give me the sequence of um the children that your father conceived ahead of you okay it was girl girl boy boy okay so uh girl and i'm gonna use a different color on this if i can find a blue that works Girl, girl. Mm -hmm. Next. Boy, boy. Boy, boy. And then me, girl. Girl, girl. Boy. Boy. That really works well with that one. So I'll just use mm -hmm. this one. Boy, boy. And then you, correct? Yep. Correct. It's in that. So then it would be girl, boy. So I'm number five in this lineup. So I'm going to use green with um, some gold. And you'll see why I would call this um, the autumn girl. Mm -hmm. Genetically, we start at the top. This is five behind a girl. So we, we write that first one down. This, I use this as code of five, long neck five, excuse me. There's nothing. Nothing personal about that. Five, girl. That's the, if I just put it here, this is the genetic number. And then the second one is another G, is the gender number. Then you count these. How many girls are there? Three, girl. So you now combine these two influences. Five behind a girl, genetic number. Three behind a girl, gender number. Can you see that white part okay? Yes. Now that gives us a clue that your genetic composition 
And I'll, if I'll just show you five behind a girl has a connection to um, father's family. That's the father here. This is father. Father's mother is one. Father's mother's mother is five. So the primary position that affects you is going to be connected up to your father's mother's mother's line. Mm. That's five behind a girl. That's your number five position. That means your what's called your epigenetic or your methylation line is primarily influenced by the life this great grandmother had. Mm. And she's that's how it's affecting you. And that ultimately affects a particular system in the body, a particular location, and so on. Then you also have what we call a three girl influence. Then you find out that uh, three girl is father's father's two, father's father's mother is three, and her husband is four. So you have another influence that is over here to father's father's mother. So now you have two lines connecting you to your father's side of the family. Then you said that you were raised in a different environment. So mm -hmm. would you please describe the environment that you were raised in? How many siblings were above you? Um, none. Okay, so you were a five behind a girl, three mm -hmm. girl, uh, and the third category we call this is social pattern. Five behind a girl, three girl, raised like a, this is a, a five girl, three girl, raised like a number one, which has its own effect. It is the least impactful, but it is social programming. So did you say, I realize, for most people, this is a pretty complicated place to start with one of these to talk about the genetic number, gender number, and now we're going to go into social number. The third category, genetic number, gender number, social number is, okay, so we had two more siblings that came in from a different marriage. We had two people that were, you know, orphans, and they came in, and they, then they came and they went, and I live with my mother's mother for a while. Yes, these are social influences. Mm. But the strongest one is going to be your five girl, three girl. It's your underlying core pattern. Now, if you're raised in a different environment, it adds the advantage of different kinds of social influences that can affect your development but there is also layers of confusion and uh, uncertainty because the five behind a girl influence will keep trying to assert itself. Mm. Okay. But so you're even learning something by being raised in a different environment. So you said you were raised by your mother's side of the family? Yeah. So my, my birth mother, I'm the first daughter and the first child of my birth mother. She had, but she, but as far as my father, he had two previous marriages before my mom. So I was his third batch, I'd say, <laughs> you know. Okay, so, so, but you are, you know that you're genetically a number five of your father. Number right. Three. So that's the underlying power that's, it has a strong core level effect. Mm. Then you have a social dynamics of being raised in a house without these other siblings and you're raised like a number one girl or an only child. Your mother then had one more after that? Three, three boys after me. Okay, so this, uh, she had three boys, but not, now these are three boys of the same, not of the same father. No, only one, the one right under me is of the same father. And then she remarried and had two, I had two younger brothers so after that. To the world of nuclear family. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you can diagram these. And by the way, I, I've done hundreds or thousands of them, at, you know, at different combinations. And it never amazes me more than to see how families do all of this and what it does. And 
Um, my, my ongoing suggestion is to come back to the reality of your constitutional structure of a five behind a boy, mm -hmm. a five behind a girl, three girl. And then what I do is I uh, now make comparisons to the body type. We're not going to discuss it today, but the six girls have six forms of body types. Six boys have very different body types. Very briefly, the six boys have, number one is, is yin, what is it, slender, more slender, one, three, and five are more slender. Boys two, four, and six have a little bit more of a body constitution of different heights. And on the girls, typically girls one, three, and five, they typically have the stronger physical constitutions of the body. Mm. Uh, girls two and four and six, they're usually more thin, more yin in the body type. So I make a note of what you're describing as being a five behind a girl, three girl. Mm -hmm. And then I try to look at the shape of your face, your hands, your body type, and see if the body type that you're, you're, you're having now is actually related to your genetic or gender number or not. Mm -hmm. Now, um, science is already proving that um, approximately 20 to 24% of all children are not conceived by the man they're calling their biological father. Mm -hmm. Now that's being um, revealed more and more with the new genetic programs, 23andMe and Ancestry and so on, is that roughly at least 20%, probably closer to 25% of children are conceived by somebody else. I don't have any reactions or judgment to that, but what it does, it does create a uh, confusion in the body types versus the personality versus the gender number versus the social number. Transparency works the best, regardless of what it is. Honesty about who was where and what was where. The number of men who've conceived children in, in other environments, uh, many of them don't know that they conceived somebody somewhere. I'll use my own example. My, my son, my number one son, um, had sex with a girl when he was 16, didn't realize he conceived a child. 30 years later, the wow. child comes back and finds him. He's in shock. He never knew. She never told him. She didn't, and so on and so on. And there he has two grandchildren that he didn't even meet until he's, you know, almost he's in his 50s. Wow. So this is the dynamics of so social composition. I didn't know I had two great grandchildren walking around on the planet. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, I'm honored to know such things because now as a grand great grandfather to them, I can bring awareness to the contribution I make to their well-being and so on. And I'm enjoying an ongoing opportunity to at least be a part of their lives. So it's not easy to know who and what you are, but the combination of the birth order can sometimes help and sometimes it's confusing. When it gets confusing, mm -hmm. trust the body. Then okay. trust your own feelings and your own instincts but even if you don't know your 12 grandparents, it's really important that you develop a feeling oriented appreciation or gratitude that they do exist in your DNA, whether or not you got the right one or not. It's very important for me to say, okay, appreciate with some degree of gratitude, my mother's mother's mother, biologically, whoever she was, I never met her. And then my grandmother, my mother's mother, who died when my mother was five, my mother never could never remember her own mother. 
Mm. So these lines are important. So it's important for me to feel them because each time I develop a greater appreciation from one of these parts of the family tree, a new level of sensitivity arrives. So learning to appreciate the whole composite more. So let me press on here and ask, is there anybody else in this audience who would like to volunteer? Somebody did ask a question about being adopted. So how do you know when you're adopted? Um, in the same way I was describing, if you have no access, if you're adopted, you have no access to who your uh, grandparents were. You, you develop it as if it is your body type and you look at the social pattern that you were raised in and it does make a difference. So if that's a question that somebody has because they're adopted, I'm willing to go further with that. But typically people like to know all the ranges of exception, which is an interesting phenomenon, rather than learning the inner mechanics about how to fly their own spaceship, they wanna understand somebody else's exception. Interesting way that people are at times. So would anybody else in the audience or here like to go into their own would like to volunteer speak up and i'll i'd be happy to okay so um rachel start with the top you're i'm going to move this and i'll start to describe it uh how many children did your father have two give me the genders both female so you had a number one girl you you have some idea what that's like and then you have a younger sister that's called number two behind a girl number two behind a girl this is mother this is mother's mother that's two the number one girl is from father's side of the family this is father and then father's mother is number one girl so number one goes through father's family, father's mother, and eventually has the pattern of father's mother's mother. You remember I said before that all of the siblings pass through three primary stages in life. So if you're a number one girl, you pass through grandmother number one, grandmother number three, and grandmother number five. Where is grandmother number three? Number two grandfather is father's father, Number three is his mother and his great grandfather's four. So number three is your father's father's mother. So these three, number three, I like the colors obviously. Number five, because it's an autumn color. And number one, the earth brown color. So one, three, five is a series of opportunities or lessons for you to engage as a number one girl. I'm assuming that you're a number one girl, correct? I am, I am. So you have a younger sister and you know that even though she's in the same family, she's not like you, she takes this pattern and to her, she has a different sequence of what we call two, four and six. She has to go through a different sequence in her life. And later on, this really helps. If you have children, you can guide them and prepare them for these natural shifts in life. You can literally train them like this since they're little children to be able to successfully make these movements. Now, uh, you have children? I do. So you have... Uh, uh, number one son. You have a boy, so I'm going to put him in a blue because that means he's going to be coming from his mother's family. So number one son is connected to mother's father's line and his father. So for him, your number one son, that's his number one, mother's father. 
So this connection becomes really valuable for him to have. And if you're a number one girl and you have a positive relationship with your father, it accelerates his ability to access that grandfather. Now you have a second child? I do, uh, a girl. A girl, well, what I would say is good luck with that one. And the reason for it's two behind a boy. We know two behind a boy is fire. Now, she's also going to be influenced by the fact that her mother is a number one girl. Later on, we'll show you that if mother is a two girl or mother is a four girl, it has an effect on the first daughter. So if you're, you're, you're a number one girl and she's a number one girl, well, this just accelerates her number one qualities and her number two qualities and she becomes more driven than ever on the father's side of the family because now we have fire and that I mentioned we have fire. So now that accelerates her use of fire. So what is it to call it fire? Fire to me is emotion. It's action, it's doing, it's success, it's accomplishment, it's rage. It can be all of those at the same time. So this is a two behind a boy, one girl, with a mother has a one girl that accelerates this process. Now she's gonna be primarily, most of these lines is more aligned to the father's side of the family. That doesn't mean she doesn't have your DNA, she has 50% of it but she's gonna be acting out the personality functions from the father's side, and she's gonna be more quickly accessing things the way you are. For example, you would access things from your father's mother. So you would take things from here. In another stage of your life, father's father's mother, you take things from here. And then later in life, you'll take things from here. The three women on this side of your family, this is your particular kind of journey. So these little marks to me are epigenetic stressors. So whatever happened to these great grandparents or grandmother, they are the time bomb like charges that wait for you to experience. And they will come down to you at just the right time for them to materialize in your life. It's called living. This is what happens. These influences start to arrive. Now, do you happen to have grandchildren yet? I have more children than that, but I do not have grandchildren. Oh, you want to do the rest of them? Sure. Okay, let's do another one. So I have a third born daughter, but we have added a, um, a foster son who is older than the third born daughter. Okay, so you added a foster son but only a year ago. Okay, that makes a difference. So you added a foster son. I, I have a tendency to say this is foster, I drops in to the family. This is somebody from outside the family comes in. Then you have a, uh, another child below this? Yes, uh, my, a daughter. Uh, and she's genetically then, she's going to be, this is a three behind a boy, two girl. So she's here. Genetically, she's three, not counting this one yet. She's three behind a boy, two girl. Do you understand that? Yes. So she's three behind a boy. That's her gender number, her genetic number, and her gender number is two girls. So she's going to have uh, two lines of yin toward mother's family. So by that, I'm saying that she is a two girl. So she's going to be connected over to mother's mother. That's her number two. But she's also three behind a boy. That's mother's mother's father. That's another one altogether. Two of them running right through her. Uh, all right, I'll pause here. This makes sense to me, but I, I need to be sure that you're up with this. 
This three behind a boy, that's this one. That's called mother's mother's father. That's a pattern of the mind or clever fox or many other things we could describe, but just that's a mental position. Then her gender number, she's a two girl. That goes right through the same position. So she has two influences by this same grandmother. So she has double influence here by mother's mother. So that relationship is going to be useful and helpful. And, and then you could basically teach her how to do that. But that depends on you being able to have a relationship with your own mother. I mean, it's possible that you do, but most number one girls who relate to father's side of the family, they might have little pushy shove things with mother and your daughter might actually have an ability to relate to your mother more than you do because she's got a double shot there and this will help her and yada yada. There's all kinds of really cool ins and outs about how that works. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay, now we're gonna throw a zinger in here. How old was your daughter, your third child, when you adopted this boy? Oh, we didn't adopt, we fostered, but he, she was 15. Oh, we she was not, 15. She was 15 and we didn't adopt because he was 17. Oh, it's uh, then almost, almost no influence, but it does affect her socially because she will have him dropping in. If she were six months old, it has a dramatic effect and affects her body constitution. If she's past three or four, it doesn't affect the body as much, but it affects the psychological function. If she's seven or eight, it doesn't affect her body or her psychological but affects how she relates. So the older it is, the less influence. So she's 15 and this other person comes to stay for a while. There's almost no influence. Okay. So she's a three behind a boy, two girl, and that would make it a wonderfully capable, what I call water snake. Why water snake? Well, uh, a two girl is what we call the water position. And she's got two times the water position. So she's got a lot of water, but she's also a three boy. A three boys are hawk-like focused. So I, sometimes that's like a very focused, elusive. So they can be elusive, hawk-like, water. It's to me, that's what I call it, the water snake. Not to be unkind about it, but it's elusive, watery, but very pointed, very capable of going where it wants to go. So this is a you know, driven kind of privacy oriented, three behind a boy, two girl. Questions to that? I don't have any. The, one of the ways we use this is to eventually look at the symptoms of the family tree. What, what did each one of the ancestors die with? What was the disease? What was the problem? Was it a stroke? Was it a cancer? What are the symptoms in the uh, bodies of the children? I like to look at the iris to see what they got. I like to look at the shape of their face, their skin, the marks on their skin. And pretty soon you can look at this and you start looking for symptoms. So I know this is a lot of information about how to be able to do this, but Thank you for being willing to be a guinea pig for us in this. Appreciate your contribution. Yeah, no problem. All right, thank you. Anyone else? We have time to do one more? We have plenty of time. All right. Is there someone else who would like to do this? Danny, you already did it for me in person, but I we we erased the the drawings when we sit down. It's Christina Wapsie again. Hey there. So unless there's someone else willing to go ahead, I I wouldn't mind doing this. Actually, could I go ahead? Sure. Yes. Um, okay, I have kind of a smaller family, so it might be quicker. Um, I am the I have two older brothers, and then I have an only child who's a girl. Okay, so you. Uh, you're pretty sure that you have two older genetic brothers mm -hmm. conceived by the, the same father. Right. All right, so we'll, we'll say the first son 
I'm going to do it in blue because that's from typically mother's side of the family and mother's father's line. And typically what that means is number one sons have a tendency to drift toward mother. And there's a whole bunch of things we could talk about that, but that's his relationship to your mother. Okay. Then you have another uh, brother. Yes. That's uh, in the position called two son. That's the second son, and he has uh, the pattern of fire, and that goes over to father's family and father's father. That's the two boy position. So they're very different personality patterns. The second one would have a desire to want to go toward the father if given the opportunity. Number one sons rarely, if ever, go toward father unless there are circumstances that create that. They're usually designed to be very different than their father. Now, the third one's you? Yes. So I would give you the money. <laughs> Why? Well, what I found about this uh, number one girl who's in this position, three behind a boy is an, a mental or analytical or clever position. If you accentuate that with a already mentally clever number one girl, this has um, double clever, double mind function. And um, it does an interesting thing because even though it's three behind a boy, which is really more from uh, mother's, mother's father, that's three, she takes this side here, as a one girl and she does then, she takes it out and she ends up, well, I'll have to explain why she ends up here. She ends up at three girl first, cause she's a three, but she takes this, she combines the three and the three and she comes out one very capable human being. That's why I say I would give you the money. You, this is somebody typically who has the ability to, to manage situations or people. So you should be organizing, you know, my slides better than me. <laughs> I, I, and I don't know if any of that's true, by the way, because I'm not it always is. right. It's, it's absolutely true. <laughs> you know, it's just how to appreciate that position. And really, if we could raise each child in the way that they are in their natural energy, if we could design an educational plan, that's not a cookie cutter for all sizes have to fit that one, but you can do some very interesting positions for this one because she's not as likely to be quick to go into domestic things first. She wants to go do other things and then she usually has higher aspirations and maybe if she gets there later in life, she would have children, but she's Usually there's not as much urgency to have them. But she has one girl. And she has one girl. Yeah, and I had her when I was 40. <laughs> that's the, so there you go. <laughs> that's the more typical way. So she's a one girl. Oh, boy. Now, the language of communication between a one girl and a one girl, as you've learned by now, is she does not listen to instruction. She has a tendency to watch what you do and she mimics what you do and then she wants to do it better than you. Number one girls, by the time they're, they're two, they put their hands on their hips and they tell their mothers, you know, I own the house, you don't. And that man that you're sleeping with, he's my man, not yours. This is a two or three year old girl. And if that's appreciated for what it is because she's building power, She's designed to take whatever the mother is and uh, embody it and then do something bigger with it. So then she usually does something completely higher than that because, well, I won't exactly tell you why, but she'll do something like a purple because she'll take what you had, put it inside of her, do her own thing on top of it and accelerate it in her own direction. So they're it's kind of interesting to see children off of this model because she, you start here and you go up, what I call you go to 
five and then you go to six, right? This is you going five and six and you wanna go something into power. So if you have a child who comes in after you, she says, nah, I don't wanna do this one so fast. I wanna do, I wanna start here. Wow, how does a child start at five? Five what, Danny? Five chakra, throat, expression? Yes, what okay. she's asking, what's, what does five mean? Well, five means everything because the numbering system has to do not just with chakra systems, but everything else in reality around us. For example, the world, as you've noticed, has become global in the last 40 years. Global. The world is when something is a five, it's global. When something is a six, it's actually a little bit more than global. When something is a four, it's national. When something is a three, it's community. Then it gets down into self and family. So number one girls in a number one girl position, they're family, 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 family. And they have a hard time doing the progression of one, three, five. Except in this case, because she's a three behind a boy, one girl. That's right. So she's already moved beyond just her family. Right. She's already moving past her family and says, maybe I'll do a family later. Right. She's that kind of thing. But then when she has a daughter. oriented. Yes, the daughter goes, oh, if mom's already done that, I don't, I'm going to go higher than that. Yeah. So it drives her into a different kind of personality, a different interest. That might she might might start out with a global marketing interest or <laughs> or something you know in high school she's already looking at National Geographic about where she wants to go and I won't go into all the other possibilities because she could go six girl out of this because right. when one girl goes really high she comes out six girl which means which means that she goes out the top of her head and she sees flowers in all directions. No, uh, uh, how do you explain that? Each, each birth order position has a kind of diameter to it or a quality to it. So boy one, for example, is air. Girl one is earth. And they very much relate to each other. Boy two is fire. Girl two is water, they're opposites. But now it starts to go higher. Boy three, metal. Girl three, wood. So metal cuts wood. Water stops fire. Air transcends the mountain. There's a whole series of metaphors and languages, but we're also talking about the inclusiveness of the number of people. Family, community, global. So that's one, three, five, or self, others, all. Well, I mean, when you get to five and you start to say global, then you say compassion for all living things. That's where a lot of fives go to. They want to have the unity of all living things. And then by the time they get to five, they realize all living things might include things they don't see. Because in order to get there, they can't touch it, they can't smell it, they can't taste it. They seldom get to be able to be there with it. They might take a trip to Africa to see the elephants, but they already had a sense of symbiotic relationship with the animal kingdom already. So when you have a, uh, a girl like this, whose mother already started at three and she has to make two more leaps, She's gonna go pretty high and that means, what does it mean to be a six girl? So then you study what the implications are to be six girl. So there's two, two numbers in the head, six and six, basically. Six of the masculine side is the, the arrogant capacity of the entitlement of having your frontal cortex. My frontal cortex is superior to your frontal cortex and I should be the dictator of the world, which is what happens with dictatorial types of people who want to be the, I want to be the power of the world. Everybody should adore and obey me. That's frontal six. Then on the back of that six, you have six girl, which is a six of a different kind, six in the invisible spectrum. 
which is um, interest in spirits or metaphysics or angels, or she slips out the top of her head and she sees other realities or she's interested in things, maybe astronomically, she's interested in other planets, so she's very technical, or she's you know very new agey forward, so all kinds of possibilities. And to, to see that, it would be nice to see the body types, the symptoms, the face, the hands, and you could get a pretty good idea by the time she's four or five, which direction she's going. Wow. Okay, so now you've got an advanced application of how the numerical numbers of one girl, two girl, three girl, four, and so on and so on, and how it relates to, you mean I have an accelerator inside my spaceship? Let's see, I have a clutch, I have a brake, I have a naming device. I Wait a minute, how would I learn how to drive this very beautiful, expensive vehicle I have and drive it so well that I could use all six of my gears and then there are six and then I could add permutation in and pretty soon I'm doing 108 or 112 different functions at the same time. Oh, sorry about that. That was my personal interest is doing the 108 and 12, but you know, how do they all work? And so I, I, I think it's best we just wind it down here. Is there anyone else? Christine and I would be willing to do yours again more thoroughly sometime. Thank you. I, I have a heartfelt uh, interest in both of your children. Thank you. And I'd like to be able to one day discuss the physical symptoms that you've brought forward. We're on your schedule for Tuesday. <laughs> Because I'm I'm working with her and her children, they have particular um, physical and emotional symptoms, and I'm trying to track why those symptoms would be in that location at that age, and what are the possible implications about where they came from, what might you do to be able to uh, support those children at an early age so they they get a chance to solidify their own well-being before they get much older. It's the diagram, Danny. It's, it's the diagram where, you know, I just happened, like you started erasing it. I walked away with, with an audio recording, but, you know, there was no visual for me. And this is just such, it's so much to process and, and digest. So if there's, I, I just, I got your book on birth order. I quickly looked through it. I don't see this, you know, one, two, three, four, five, which you're, the slides that you were showing today. So is it somewhere? Um, and, uh, you know, I know you've got all, you know, you've got the, sim the symbols and the numbers, but it would help to have it spelled out. This is the number, you know, one grandparent. This is, you know, paternal mother, you know, is it somewhere anywhere on the site or Facebook? Uh, could you, they're on the Red International Facebook, under files, there are a series of charts. And these okay. charts will show you there's, uh, I think four of them. They're available for the download for your use, but, but also the birth order book that you mentioned, it does have, it does have the linkages in the back. Okay. If you, if you look at the, the back of the birth order book, it yep. has all of the grandparents and their characteristics and how they fit into the system and so on. Here's one on the grandparents that's in the back of the book. Okay. So that chart's in there. If I could rewrite the book, I would write it a little better than this, but because this is really not just birth order or nature, it's the energies in the body, it's also the spheres and the spirit world and so on. It's vowels and consonants, it's colors and frequencies. And oh, by okay. the way, I will be delighted to uh, draw out your family tree more thoroughly for you when we meet again. So, sounds good, thank you. Um, what What is really interesting, you did mention the firstborn son respiratory connection um 
and I know there's there's so much probably, and I know you tie it to the eye and you look, you know, to the on the you know the the face, the hands, and all that. But when you analyze my children, you know, there's you know it would. I'm so curious to to see what is it in my own health, what is passed down to my kids, what are the trends and tendencies. Yeah, that's true. Diving into health. Yes, health is a um, primary place to go to, to to fortify the health by this information. Uh, what I like about working with young children, particularly children under eight, is by um, just going there with them, um, they don't need to comprehend what you and I are talk talking about. But mm -hmm. if we go into these places and we refer to their grandparents, it's automatically beginning to acknowledge and facilitate movement. And um, we'll get into the particular symptoms that your children have and the probable orientations. Now, in order for your son to have a respiratory function, it is about your father's relationship to you and his mother. That's the respiratory line. So the difficulty between you and your father is the facilitator for lung difficulties in the grandson. And then the- My son, my, my son. Yes, your son is connected to your father and his relationship to both of his parents now is going to be instrumental in the access to what we call the pineal function and also the asthmatic function or panic function. The interwoven connectedness is what you discover is every single one of these junctures is dynamically rich with unresolved feelings. And if the feelings are unacknowledged and they're not dealt with, they come down as symptoms in the grandchildren. And anytime you see symptoms in children under the age of seven, particularly, the dynamic is actually going on in the home and is, being, is triggering the, these things from the past and is being quickly revealed and they are the symptoms that can be most rapidly dealt with. So that's why it's optimistic to be able to find them, identify these things, rather than letting them become 38 or 40 or 42 when it's far too late. And then the physical symptoms are very deeply embedded. So uh, this is an overview about how the birth order system works in this way. I will provide another time in one of those charts, you'll see glands, organs, and body symptoms. Mm -hmm. so the, all those charts are available. I've got some more to make, but. And Denny, this is really an introduction. I mean, we could spend days. Yes, order. this is only an introduction. I know it got pretty quickly into the advanced phenomenon, but um, just take a while to consider the six girls within yourself, just the feeling of them and the feeling of the difference between one girl, earth, and two girl, water, and how there is a relationship between water and feelings and earth and, and safety or security or health, you know, then you can open up each one of these gates of six different girls by just simply appreciating their dynamic. Then you mm -hmm. have six boys. Mm -hmm. So father's father, for example, fire. Wow, is that important or what? It's vitality, it's success, it's action, it's courage, it's the hero, it's change. It's mobility. It's all kinds of important things, including blood. It's the dynamic occupying of feelings in the body. So your relationship to your father affects your ability to be able to access father's father. Now, wherever there's unfinished business, I call them circuits. 
So those of you who have endured this, I appreciate your patience to be here and the opportunity to record this. It's going to be available for other people to see. So I, I try to keep it as well basic as I can. And remember, this is an introduction. I'll turn it back over to Randy. Thank you. Yes, thank you everybody for joining us. And thank you, Denny, for sharing your wisdom with all of us. And um, as he said, this is an introduction and we have many more things that we can share in um, future workshops and we'll continue to do these on a regular basis. So thank you again, everybody.